these are tools of the trade, so to speak, for the, the endeavor called fly tying. Okay, right off the get-go here, the very most important tool or item that you're going to need is a vise. I've had this vise in excess of 35 years, ladies and gentlemen. It is a regal vise. It is a non-rotary vise. They didn't even have them out back in my day when I bought this. This is on a five-pound br brass base, by the way. But let me show you the tip of this guy here. See this cam lever? What this thing will do, what this particular vise will do, it'll hold everything from a six-odd hook clear down to a number 32, which is awful dang small. And you don't have to adjust the collets. And this is what you're looking for in a vise. You're looking for one that's, you get the best vise you can. And can I recommend a good vise to you? No, because there's a ton of them on the market. I just know the more money you spend and the heavier duty of the vice it is and like that, the better off you're going to be. If you can find one of these old school regal vices on eBay or something, buy it. Because this, I guarantee you there's nothing worse than a vice that breaks, it will not hold the hooks properly and what not have you. This has been a really good vice. And what did I get for this? $150.30. Five some odd years ago, that's a fact. And you adjust it with this Allen wrench back here. I don't know if you can see it. This Allen wrench right here, it's adjustable there, there. You, you can turn the, the stand right here on this thumb knob and like that. But let's put that subject to rest because I got other tools to get off onto. But that is a regal vice. Your vice is one of your very most important tools if you will, when it comes to fly tying. Okay, next important tool is scissors. And can I recommend scissors to you? Yeah, a good sharp pointed pair. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious here. But sharp is the key because if you do a lot of fly tying like me, I guarantee you you're going to wear out scissors in a quick doggone hurry. But you don't really need... You, what you want to concentrate on is scissors... That's, that fits your fingers, got very, very, you know, the, like these ones right here, I'll bet you the blade on this is probably only an inch and a quarter long or whatever have you. I've got all kinds of scissors, but you all have to decide as a tire what you like. Here's, these are gold loop scissors, by the way. I bought these from Cabela's quite a few years ago. They've been pretty good scissors. Here's an old clunky wore out pair. I don't even know what they are. Uh, Dr. Slick makes them. There's all kinds of people that make them, but my favorite pair so far, that's just because I haven't wore them out, these gold loops. <laughs> okay, here's another indispensable item that you'll need. A bobbin, ladies and gentlemen. This guy right here is what holds your thread. It's what holds the tension when you're sucking down on a hook. You see what I'm doing? You see how I'm torturing my finger there? You know, they make all kinds of bobbins, but what I want you to concentrate on is the tip of that bobbin. Years ago, they used to make these out of brass, and they'd wear out. The, the, the six aught and four aught and two aught uh, tying thread right here would groove the brass, and it cut your line. But now, you want to get a bobbin that's stainless steel, if you will, you want to get one that's got a ceramic, this one here has got this little black hole that you see right there, that's ceramic. That, these kind of bobbins won't wear out on you. And you, you can also get, you know, bobbins like this for floss. You know, I haven't used this bobbin in quite a few years, but let me set this aside for a second. I do have one lined up right here with red floss in it just to show you this. But like I say, you spend a little money on these tools, ladies and gentlemen, because some of these tools I've literally had for years and years and years. Very important, these bobbins. you got, you got to have them. It's just that simple. And you got to have them scissors. Okay, let's get into this wonderful world. Right here, as goopy as this sounds right here, or as this looks, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a pair of hackle pliers. You can't, I don't even remember what the name of these are. 
this is my most favorite hackle plier. I use it all the doggone time. It's just a spring wire kind of thing. I had a son-in-law that went looking for one of these and he couldn't find it. But believe you me, these hackle pliers come in all kinds of configurations and oh, they promise you everything under the sun and half of them don't work right because they don't hold the, the hackle and whatnot have you. But that yellow pair down there I just showed you were pretty good. They come in different sizes like this. You'll have to play around and find out which hackle pliers that you like the best. It's just that simple. But there again, spend a little money on these guys. Because the problem with a lot of hackle pliers, when you go to clamp down on the hackle, the hackle will slip out. They don't hold very well, okay? But you got to have them. Okay. Another couple of tools. Right here, bodkins. Now these guys right here are used for picking out hackle fibers, uh, dub teasing and all that. But more importantly, what these what I mostly use these for is dipping into my head cement. And I've got a video, a YouTube video on it. And this is how you put your droplets of head cement into the various areas of your fly. And a lot of these, see that end right there? You can throw half hitches with that with that uh, taper right there, okay? And this one's set up the same way. All right. Another, you don't absolutely have to have this, but this is a whip finisher. In this particular video, I'm just showing the tools of the trade, so to speak. But this guy right here is what you use to, to tie off your fly. To get a whole bunch of half hitches, half hitches, in a series to tie off the head of that fly. And I, all of my flies, every one of them, the heads are whip finished. Now you can use half hitches and like that. The bodkins I just showed you right there will do that. But I know a lot of old school fly tires, they just throw half hitches. Me, I use this tool right here. It's indispensable. It's called a whip finisher. Let me make sure that this, you get a good look at that. Okay, right here, dubbing tools. You might want to get into this world of dubbing tools. I don't, this right here has got a bodkin on the end of this. I probably use this more, you know, the bodkin than I do the, than the dubbing hook here on the end. But, you know, be aware of that. Here's another dubbing tool. I don't use it very often, but I might as well point this kind of stuff out. You know, a lot of this stuff kind of reminds me of dentist tools. <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke, you know. Okay, well, tying some patterns is kind of like pulling teeth. Okay, now here is a comb. You're probably saying, what in the hell you need a comb for? Pay attention. When you're combing, a lot of this deer hair, elk hair, and stuff like this, when, okay, you get you a big clump and you or going to go to tie it on, a, say, an overwing on a, on a hook, or, you know, you're going to have to have a way to clean that hair, knock out those fibers, that under fur, and all that. All you got to do is go on to Wally World, to your favorite five and dime store, and buy you a fistful of combs. And get the ones that's got the thin, the thin rakes right here, if you will. They work the best. Okay, what am I forgetting here? Okay, here's another undispensable tool. A hair stacker. Now, I don't know if you'd be able to find one of these. Like I say, I've had a few guys that have, I've tutored before, and they've, you know, come up to me and said, Jim, I can't find one like what you got. And I go, well, so sorry, but, you know, I don't manufacture this kind of stuff. I really should get into it. But this job right here allows you to place your elk, your deer hair, and whatnot have you in here like this. And you put the very hair ends right there. And you, you know, you, you sit there and it, it'll allow you to stack your hair evenly. I just spread the hair out with my fingers like this. I tap it a few times like that. Done deal. Most of them now are round. But you need a hair stacker, okay? What else am I missing here? I know there's something I'm missing. I always do. I hate shooting these videos all over again. 
Yeah, let me see. Well, for the most part, that's it. I do have another, let me reach back here for a second. I got another set of little hackle pliers. There. These hackle pliers come in all sorts of sizes, like I say. But the point being, main thing is, your main investment is your vise. Simple as that. Pick out a good one. I can't recommend one to you. I've had this for so many years, I'd be lost without this Regal Engineering vise. There's a lot of good ones on the market, I know that. This is a non-rotary vise, by the way. And then you just go from there, from all them tools I just got done showing you. Okay, I think that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. I can't think of anything else. Thank you very much for the movie review.